How's it going everybody? Welcome back to a cut above knife sharpening YouTube channel. Today I've had um, some people asking me about my sharpeners, about why I use what I use, why I don't use um, some different equipment. So today we're going to sit down, I'm going to go over how I use these, why I use these, and why I don't use other stuff. So are these uh, the best fit for you? Let's find out. <music> All right, so what I run for 90% of all my knife sharpening is the WorkSharp Ken Onion Edition with the blade grinding attachment. Um, this right here does, like I said, about 90% of my, my sharpening. I do have a couple other ways that I do some sharpening, and those are um, either with doing by hand stones or I have a guided knife sharpener to do a really more refined precise edge but these right here will do basically everything that you need to do as far as sharpening a knife um, they do make this attachment which is typically how these sharpeners come um, you don't need the blade grinding attachment to sharpen it's simply all it does is that right there and it comes with these smaller belts so you have these 18 inch belts and I don't, I don't know what the size of these are um, but it has these smaller ones that go on here and that gives you a sharpener like that and I use this style for quite a while and it does pretty good so you can adjust it from anywhere from 30 degrees and you can go all the way down to 15 degrees on this and your typical kitchen knife is going to be somewhere in the 22 and a half to 18 degrees 18 degrees more for like a fine japanese style uh, sushi knife somewhere in there and even down to 16 degrees but for your everyday kitchen knife your chef knife your pairing knife you can't go wrong with 22 and a half degrees and so on this sharpener it's got two guides here and that's what sets your angle and i've just kind of got a mock-up of a blade here and you'll run it through on each side stropping it back and forth until you get through your belt progressions and a little bit i'll tell you the belt progression that i found to work the best and it's kind of got these rollers that help it along so you don't go too far and it's really a user-friendly design, um, but the issue I had with running this attachment here was, especially for customer knives, now if it's your own knife, you you may not care, but over time, uh, grit and material gets built up on these little wings that it guides across. Well, that puts scratch marks along the side of the blade, so... I'm getting a knife that doesn't have scratches and I'm sharpening it and I'm putting scratches into it. It's just, I, I don't feel good about that. So I stopped using this attachment, which for most people, this is going to be fine. Um, you may not care. I mean, most knives have scratches on them anyways, and it's not like it does anything to the performance of the blade. It's just aesthetics. So they do make this blade grinding attachment. Now don't let this scary off it's not as bad as it or as technical as it seems it does take some practice and some skill but you do it a couple times you get pretty used to it so on this it's got a tensioner here you just pull it back and it locks in so you can put your different belts on bound up here then you just release it release it so it puts tension on it and you're ready to go and you see I'm right there in about the 22 and a half degree mark if you can see that and again this one goes from anywhere from 10 degrees up to 35 degrees 
35 is going to be more for like your hatchets, your axes, uh, like a maybe a lawnmower blade. Um, but for most knives that you're going to have kitchen wise, you're going to be in that 20 to 22 and a half degree angle. Now for your pocket knives, stuff like that, a good angle to be looking for is 25 degrees. That'll give you a, a sharp, long lasting edge, but it's not going to be prone to chipping or um, wearing out too quickly. So the way this works, unlike the other one where you had a guide to run across this, so this is gonna be 90 degrees to the angle that you set. So you're gonna put your blade here flat on this and this gives you a reference mark and you're just gonna pick straight up, go in and run a pass across it. And you'll do the same thing for the other side. You'll put it down, bring it up, run it across. And that's going to give you whatever angle you set. So for this instance, it'll give you that 22 and a half degrees. And what you're doing is when you're running it across, you're wanting that burr to come back up. So when you run your finger across it, you want to be able to feel that burr. Then you flip it over and you run it and you want to get that burr back up again. And you just keep doing that and that's called stropping it and you keep progressing through the belt grits. And so the belt grits that I run, um, this green one over here, this is a 120. This is from Red Label Abrasives. Um, this, I don't run on every single blade that comes in here. If it's a new customer that's never brought me their knives, um, I'm gonna run it on this to reprofile it to that 22 and a half or that 20 degrees that we're looking for. Now, if it's been in here, we've already established that edge at the angle that we want. And unless it's badly damaged, chipped, or something along those lines, we don't need to go back to this aggressive belt again. So then we'll start and we'll go to this X65 course. And they say this is about a 120. I think it's a little bit finer than a 120. Um, this is from Worksharp themselves this belt so i'll run it on that then we'll go to an x22 i believe they say this is like a 300 to 500 grit and uh i'll run it on that one so that's why i have three machines so i'll go 120 65 22 then i'll switch and i'll go to i believe this is an x4 this is a finer belt then very finely I'll go to this gray belt and this is about a 6,000. Um, and you can stop at any one of these levels, but I'm going for a mirror polish edge. So that's why I'm going through so many progressions. Once you establish that, that burr and you get that burr taken down, your knife's sharp. It's not gonna necessarily get any sharper, but it'll last longer if you get it to that polished edge. Plus it, it looks nice. So, that's the progression that I go through on most everything. Then I'll finally, I'll strap it on this leather board with green jeweler's rouge. And that's it, that's all I do for the knives. It seems like a lot, but once you get into the practice of it and the hang of it, you get a good rhythm down. It's really not that bad, especially for repeat customers. It goes a lot quicker um, because we've already established that angle. So we're not trying to reprofile the blade. Now, if you have to reprofile it, it's going to take a little bit of time. But these 120s from Red Label Abrasives, they they fly right through the material. So you got to be careful. You don't want to sit there and hover on it for too long. You want to make nice, even, smooth passes. If you're going to sit there and hang out, you're going to create a divot, in a, a pocket there that you're going to have to work out. Um, you can also turn these around. And say you have a knife that's got the tip broke off of it, you can reprofile on it like a normal traditional grinder. So that's kind of nice. Um, and that's, they're, they're small, they're compact. And for the size of my shop, these work great. So that's what we're gonna get into next is why did I choose the Work Sharp? Why did I choose the Ken Onion Dish? So, from the very beginning when I was sharpening my own knives before I ever even dreamed of this being a business, I had one of Work Sharp's very original uh, sharpeners. It wasn't the Ken Onion Edition, it was just the um, 
I don't even remember what they called it, but it takes it takes a belt this small. That's that's how big it is. And it did great for pocket knives. It was phenomenal. Um, and I, I fell in love with it. It was small. I could throw it in the bottom of my toolbox. And when I needed my knife sharpened, we could sharpen it. And a little bit about my background. At that time, I worked as an electrician at a fire truck manufacturing facility. And I cut a lot of wire, stripped a lot of wire, um, opened a lot of boxes, packages. I was constantly using a knife and constantly having to sharpen a knife because cardboard is very abrasive on knives and it dulls them out. And as you imagine, stripping back, uh, well, let's see what size wire was it? Two lot wire, um, single lot wire. It, it damages your knives over time. So that work sharp did a phenomenal job. It was quick, it was easy. It gave me a great edge and it lasted a long time. So fast forward, when I started getting into this, I had one work sharp and going through six progressions of belts, that takes quite a bit of time because you're changing out belts, you're going back and forth. So I ended up over time, I've got three of these now, so I can set up and run, just have them all running and just work through the progressions and I only have to switch belts one time and I can fly through knives pretty quickly. So that leads to the question, why don't I run something like uh, what Harbor Freight has? They have a one by 30 belt grinder. And those are great. Uh, a lot of sharpeners use those. They're cheap, they're easily accessible. If you have one break, you can go to Harbor Freight down the street and they typically have them on the shelf. Belts aren't that hard to acquire for them. Um, so why don't I use them? Simply, I don't have the room for it. These take up small amount of room. I can put these on the table and that's how much room they take up. If I need to use the workbench, I can pull them off to the side and they take up no room at all. I also do mobile sharpening. So I'll go to facilities or stores and do sharpening for a day. And I can throw these in a rolling toolbox and I've got all my equipment right there and it takes up no room, they're quiet, and they're just super user friendly. They do cost more than the Harbor Freight Sharp, or the, I wouldn't call it a sharpener, the one by 30 belt grinder. So there is a little bit up forward cost, but for my particular reasons, they work great. Um, some of the drawbacks, these belts are more expensive than a one by 30. Not everybody carries them. Um, I do get a lot of them through WorkSharp. Uh, they work with me pretty closely. And uh, Red Label Abrasives, who's my primary source for my uh, belts for my big 2x72. So I don't have an issue getting them. They tend to cost a little bit more than the 1x30, but they they seem to work great. The other drawback is these are going to wear out faster than a 1x30. Obviously, there's less surface area, so you're gonna have to change them out more frequently than a one by 30 would. So there are drawbacks, there are advantages to these. Um, this just happens to fit my shop better. Um, someday if I had a bigger shop, I could have standalone, I could have a wall of the one by 30s and they could just stay in a stationary place. But being that this shop is pretty modular and that I have to make room to do other stuff and to pull out other equipment to work on, to cut knife blanks out, to do glue ups. These, these fit the bill for me. Um, and they've never let me down. They've performed. I've sharpened thousands of knives on these and I've never had one issue. Um, they do sell replacement parts for them and I've got some and I've never had to replace anything. So now that I say that I'll probably have an issue, but to date, after thousands of knives that ran across these and they've ran for hours on end, I, I can't say enough about them. Uh, WorkSharp really nailed it on the head with these. Um, the Ken Onion Edition, uh, if you don't know who Ken Onion is, is he's a very well-known, renowned knife maker. And uh, if he puts his stamp on something, it's, it's gonna be top-notch. It's gonna be a good product. So I definitely recommend these. They they're an upfront cost for you, but 
uh, you're going to be super happy with it. You can even sharpen serrated knives on these to a point. They show that you can do scissors. I've never done scissors because I have an actual, uh, I have a machine that does scissors and it does a phenomenal job better than I think these could ever even do. But uh, that's why I use these. Um, if you're looking for them, this isn't sponsored by WorkSharp, uh, but I just, I really stand by this product. Um, if you want to get these, go on WorkSharp's site. You can get a hold of these. Um, Amazon sells them. Um, and grab one of these up. You don't have to get the knife grinder or the blade grinding attachment. Just get one that's got the standard attachment. But I definitely, definitely recommend the Ken Onion Edition. It's got a bigger motor. Um, it runs the one inch wide belts versus the half, I think they're half inch, half inch wide belts. And uh, it's got a heavier duty cycle. It's just, it's a really good product. So that's enough about me just going on and on and on about why I like these and why I don't like something else. So we're gonna end this video here. Um, I'm gonna do a knife collection video. I've had a lot of people ask me, hey, let's see your knife collection. Go over what kind of knives you have. So I finally pulled all the knives together. Well, most of them. Uh, there's still quite a few of them out there floating around different spots, but I'm gonna get those out. We're gonna go through those, kind of talk over some of them, but that's my knife sharpening setup. That's how I use these. If you want a more in-depth look at the specifics of how to sharpen a knife with um, either the blade grinding attachment or this attachment here, put a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see um, because you guys are what make this channel. Um, you push the content that we're going to put out there and we're quickly approaching 100 subscribers. I, I didn't know where this was going to go when I started it a couple months ago, but there's a hundred of you out there at least looking at this channel and that's, I, I can't believe that. So drop a comment down below what you guys want to see. If you don't like something, let me know. I'll take the criticism and we'll change something. So as always hit that like button for me, it truly helps out the algorithm, gets us noticed. It's going to bring better content overall and uh, hit that subscribe button. There's a lot of you out there watching that aren't subscribed, very, quite a few of you. So hit the subscribe button for me. And as always, thanks for watching, guys. Be safe.